Hey, did you know I sell filters on Gumroad? Click the link in the description and follow the page to be updated whenever I share new projects. I also have a Patreon where you can contribute each month and help support the channel. Tier 3 gives you access to every new and existing Gumroad product without having to buy them all separately. Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you how to create this radioactive glow effect using the opacity features I covered in the previous video and expanding on that concept slightly. If you haven't seen that already, there should be a link in the description or else an eye somewhere, maybe here, maybe on this side, I don't know. It's a pretty cool effect, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so we start off the same way we start off every video, switching to 2D view, opening the patch editor, and just reorganizing so things look nice, and everybody can see everything that's going on. Next, we're gonna add an object. That object will be a rectangle today, which will appear nested inside of a canvas. You wanna fill the height and fill the width, and then you wanna add a material layer. We're gonna rename the material to rectangle so that you know what I'm doing. Change the shader type from standard to flat. And now we're gonna come up here to camera and add the person segmentation and the texture extraction for this camera texture. So they should appear down here as textures. Next, we're gonna to go to the library, patch assets, and I'm gonna be using the Duotone shader for this one. So type Duotone into the search bar and then import the patch once it loads. Now that we've got that, we can get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag the camera texture in here. And if you saw my previous video, we did the exact same technique, but we used an image texture, which I'd imported as a PNG file. This time we're gonna be doing the same thing, but with a camera texture. So from here, I'm gonna drag the Duotone shader in and connect this RGBA output to the texture input of my Duotone shader. Now I'm gonna drag out from here and I'm gonna create a swizzle. I'm gonna control C and control V to duplicate that. And I'm gonna connect this one up as well, both to the value inputs. I'm gonna change the value of this swizzle from an X to an RGB and I'm going to change the one down here to an A to represent the alpha channel. Now from our alpha swizzle we're going to drag out here and add a multiply patch. Now from the output of our multiply patch we're going to connect a pack and we're going to change that from a vector 3 to a vector 2. Now I'm going to take the output that's connected up to the first input here and I'm moving it down to the second one and I'm going to take the swizzle output for our RGB and connect that to the first input on our pack patch. Now we need a texture so we're going to select our rectangle here and create a patch for the diffuse texture. Connect that up at the end and you'll be able to see it yourself with the duotone shader patch already set up. You also at this point want to check the alpha box here and add your person segmentation mask which will separate you out from the background and create the beginnings of the glow effect that we're after. Now we're going to add a loop animation and we're going to connect from this progress output to a transition. That transition starts as vector 3 but we're going to change it to a number and now we're going to connect from the value output here to the second value input on our multiply patch. You can already see the effect taking place now but I'm going to change the duration from 1 second to 2.5 so it takes a little bit longer to progress from 0 to 1 one. And I'm also going to check this box here for mirrored, which means that instead of going from zero to one and then looping back around to zero again, it goes from zero to one and then goes back down to zero. So we have a nice little looping animation going on now. And what I'm going to do next is change the colors because you can leave it the way it is, but it doesn't really have the radioactive glow that we're after right now. So what I'm going to do is change color A to a nice bright green. And I'm going to change color B to this yellow here. And now, as you can see, we have a little bit of a radioactive glow going on. It's kind of bright though. So what I'm going to do is change the end value here in our transition from 1 to 0 0.8 and I'm going to change the start value from 0 to 0 0.25. So now the range is set to not completely go invisible and to not be as bright as possible. It's somewhere in the middle, which I think works pretty well. You can continue to play around with these values, adjust the duration, all kinds of stuff to create the effect that you're after. But the final thing I'm gonna do now is go into our person segmentation mask. I'm gonna reduce the edge softness just slightly to around 95% and I'm gonna increase the mask size. Now, usually I would increase it to 2.56. That's kind of almost perfectly matched around the person. But for this effect, I'm gonna increase it to 3.6 to give it a slight outline beyond the person segmentation, which which you can see clearly here in the preview window and also slightly in the simulator, but with the white background, it's kind of hard. So I'm just gonna switch over to the FaceTime camera and that should give you a better sense of what the effect actually looks like. So here it is, increasing and decreasing in opacity. You can adjust these values, like I say, so if you wanted it to start from zero and then go to maybe 0 0.5, it would do that. Now it goes from no radioactive glow to about halfway up and then goes back down again. And the duration of that is two and a half seconds. So we could speed that up again and you could have it be one second and it's kind of giving you this neon effect. You can apply this to anything, a 3D shape, a rectangle, a plane, just about any object that can have a texture applied to it. It's pretty cool actually. Once you learn the basics of this patch setup for opacity, then you can combine any shaders you like to create cool effects like this. And of course you can switch the colors out if you want. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a radioactive glow. It could be something a little bit different, but it has the same overall effect. We'll go back to radioactive. It's also worth mentioning that you can add a screen tap to pause this animation. So if we double tap here, add a 
screen tap, connect that up to a switch from the gesture state output, and then connect the on off output here to the loop animations enable input. And now when we tap on the screen after simulating touch, we can activate it with the screen tap and then pause it at any point and it will just sit there at that value. You can watch it change values down here. When I unpause, and then when I repause. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's the entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something in here useful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, share this video where you think people might find it useful. Subscribe if you wanna see more content. I've been trying to post every day uh, and it's going well so far. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Before you click off this video, I just wanted to let you know that I have merch now. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers. You may have noticed I updated my channel art. So I took that logo and put it on a bunch of stuff. If you're interested, it does help out the channel. So the links will be in the description. I want to put out a lot more content this year and your support really goes a long way. So thank you.